health care reform. In March of 2010, President Obama signed two bills into law establishing comprehensive health care reform. While some provisions of the new legislation take effect this year, others won't take effect for a few years. Four major reforms will take effect within one year. Uninsured individuals with pre-existing health conditions will be able to buy insurance from temporary high-risk pools. The age to which young adults can remain on their family's insurance plan is extended to age 26. Affected seniors will receive a $250 rebate to help fill the so-called donut hole in Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage. And insurers will no longer be able to rescind coverage due to an insured's poor health, require exclusions for children with pre-existing conditions, or impose lifetime limits on policy benefits. In 2011, Medicare beneficiaries will receive free annual wellness visits and certain preventive care services with no co-payments. Medicare Part D participants will receive a 50% discount on brand-name drugs purchased during the gap in Medicare prescription drug coverage referred to as the donut hole. A new national voluntary long-term care insurance program will be created in 2011 to provide cash benefits to working adults who become disabled after a five-year vesting period to assist in purchasing non-medical services and support that may help them remain at home. However, beginning in 2011, the cost of non-prescribed over-the-counter drugs will generally no longer be reimbursable through health reimbursement accounts or health flexible spending accounts, nor will the cost of these drugs be eligible for tax-free reimbursement from health savings accounts or Archer MSAs. In addition, non-qualified distributions from health savings accounts and Archer MSAs will be subject to an increased penalty tax of 20%. 2013 marks the beginning of a number of significant tax-related reforms. First, the income threshold for claiming the itemized deduction for medical expenses is increased from 7.5% to 10%, and the contribution limit for health flexible spending accounts is capped at $2,500. In 2013, high income wage earners will see the tax for Medicare Part A hospitalization coverage increased by nine tenths of a percent, and they will also face a new 3.8% Medicare contribution tax on unearned income such as capital gains, rent, and annuity payments. In 2014, most U.S. citizens and resident aliens will be required to have qualifying health insurance or pay a tax penalty, and employers with 50 or more full-time employees who do not offer health insurance to their employees may be assessed a fee. Also in 2014, specific reforms will apply to most health insurance policies, for example, most coverage waiting periods cannot be longer than 90 days, and insurers can no longer exclude coverage for adults based on pre-existing health conditions or apply annual limits on the amount of coverage an individual may receive. State-based health insurance exchanges should be established by 2014, through which both individuals and small businesses can purchase qualifying health insurance. Eligible individuals and families with incomes below 400% of the federal poverty level may be eligible to receive refundable premium credits and cost-sharing subsidies to purchase insurance through the exchanges. Also, Medicaid eligibility will be expanded to include individuals under age 65 with incomes up to 133% of the federal poverty level. The new legislation will change the landscape of health care now and in the future, so it's important to stay informed. To learn how health care reform may affect you, talk to your financial professional.